The Romance of the Ranchos. Long Beach, 1840. American Mary's beautiful daughter of Spanish Don. Long Beach, 1864. Great drought ruins ranchos. Long Beach, 1921. Oil discovered on Signal Hill. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos, featuring Frank Graham as the wandering vaquero and dramatizing the romantic and colorful historical events which characterized the growth of some particular section of Southern California. Life in California in the early days was always colorful and romantic and usually adventurous and exciting. Things that really happened right here where we live today were so full of interest that it is not necessary to depart from the true history in constructing these programs. In presenting Romance of the Ranchos, the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles is, by the very nature of its business, exceptionally fortunate. For the same records by which the company is able to verify land titles by tracing ownership all the way back to the earliest Spanish land grants, also provide a convenient and accurate source of authentic historical facts. Title Insurance and Trust Company is very happy to be able to share this treasure chest of fascinating information with the citizens of the community it serves. Here, ladies and gentlemen, to tell the story is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham. Buenas noches, senoras y senores. Tonight we take you to the city of Long Beach, a great modern city which a century ago was a vast pasture land, part of two ranchos, the ranchos Los Cerritos, the little hills, and Los Alamitos, the little cottonwoods. Let us relive the romance of the ranchos. <laughs> In 1784, one of the first ranchos to be granted by Governor Pedro Fajes was a vast tract conceded to the old soldier Manuel Nieto and called Los Nietos. The rancho stretched from what is now Rio Hondo and the Los Angeles River to the Santa Ana River and from the ocean to El Camino Real and the Montebello and Puente Hills. In 1834, many years after the death of the old soldier, the great tract was partitioned among his four children by Governor Figueroa. The land which was to become Long Beach was split into two ranchos, Los Cerritos, going to Doña Manuela Nieto de Cota, and Los Alamitos, going to Don Juan José Nieto. But shortly afterward, Juan José was called to see the governor in Los Angeles. You wish to see me, Your Excellency? Si, Señor Nieto. You are the owner of a rancho called Los Alamitos. But of course, Your Excellency, you granted it to me only a few weeks ago. So I did. You're not... Not going to take it away from me, are you? Uh, in a way, yes. But, but Your Excellency, I, I... wish to buy it. Oh, well, that's different. You already have two other ranchos. You would not mind selling this one? Well, perhaps... That is, if the price... I will give you 500 pesos. 500 pesos? For six squared leagues of land? See, si, 500 pesos. It is not much. It is enough for the bare land. You have no stock on it. I must go to the expense of stocking it. See, that's true. You have little use for it. You have enough land on your other ranchos. Well... 500 pesos in cash is no paltry sum. It will buy many cattle. Properly invested, it can make you rich. Uh, come, come, what do you say, Senor Nieto? Well, I don't know. I'll have to think it over. Oh, well, then perhaps I'll have to buy land up north. There I can get a bigger rancho for less money. I shall save some of my 500 pesos. Well, as a favor to you, Your Excellency. But only because of that, I will take the 500 pesos. <laughs> Los Alamitos is yours. Because of the ridiculously low price paid to the 26,000-acre rancho, many questioned the validity of a grant made by a governor who immediately bought it for himself. But the sale was not disputed. Figueroa formed the Compañía Agricultura 
to stock the ranch with cattle and horses. A few years later, he died, leaving his brother to administer the rancho. But some years before, an adventurous American had come to California and established a thriving business in the Pueblo de Los Angeles. One day, he paid a visit to his good friend, Don Juan Bandini, a prosperous ranchero of the Southland. Ah, Don Abel Stearns, mi amigo. It is good to see you again. <laughs> si, si, Don Juan. It seems a long time. It is a long time. Months since you have paid us a call. <laughs> well, you should be happy not to have to see my ugly old face. <laughs> <laughs> but nonsense. Why do you not come more often? Oh, business, you know. For an old bachelor like me, there's not much of interest except making El Dinero. <laughs> oh, you Americanos. <laughs> That's all you think about. <laughs> Why do you not just live, enjoy yourselves? <laughs> I guess we're just born with a cussed streak that won't let us take things easy. <laughs> Sometimes, mi amigo, I think so, too. When even you, who are more like us than most Americanos, cannot rest. <laughs> oh, well, I like you in spite of your energy. Gracias, mi amigo. The feeling's mutual. Uh, oh, and I must tell someone you are here. You have an admirer, senor. Uh, you have completely won the heart of a certain young lady. She has been pining her heart away for you. Yeah, what's this, a, a young lady? Well, since when have you had a young lady here? Oh, you shall see. Arcadia! Arcadia! Si, papacito. Come here, my dear. We have a guest. One whom you will be most happy to see. A guest, papa? Who could it be? Maria Lugo? Tio Manuela? Oh. El Señor Don Abel. Si, Don Abel himself. Huh? Yeah. You are happy to see him? I... Oh, si. Buenas dias, Don Abel. But this is unbelievable. Surely this can't be little Arcadia. Si, senor. Now, you see how long it has been since you were here last? Well, she, she's grown up. <laughs> a real young lady. And my child, you are beautiful. Si, si, she is. Gracias, Don Abel. You have stayed away a long time. Had I known such a vision of loveliness awaited me here, I... I should not have done so. <laughs> Papa? <laughs> oh, you Americanos are very quick at turning a pretty phrase. You know how to compliment a young lady. Oh, but I mean it, mi amigo. She is truly lovely. <laughs> well, I must tell you that your admiration is returned. She has counted the days since you were last here. Oh, Papa. Oh, you have completely won her with your Americano charm. And perhaps with those little trinkets you bring her every time you come. Oh, Papa, that is not true. Oh, see, I have something right here in my bag. I shall get it. <laughs> and you see, my little dove, he never forgets you. Oh, but I've made a mistake. Huh? That is, I... Well, I, I didn't realize... What it. is it? What's the trouble, mi amigo? Well, you, you see, it's been so long, I, I, I didn't realize it. And, and I brought a... See? What did you bring? Uh, well, this. Oh, well... Senor, it's a... a doll. <laughs> si, senorita, a doll. Oh, oh gracias, senor. It, it is beautiful. Oh, but no, you shall not have it. I have a better idea. Here's something I was going to take to my store in the Pueblo, but now it shall crown one of the loveliest heads in all Alta California. Senorita, will you accept this slight gift from your sincere admirer? A shawl! Oh, Papa, a silken shawl. Oh, it is lovely. Oh, but, Senor, it is too much. It must be worth 20 pesos. It is most elaborate. You must not for this silly girl. Senor, I insist. It is less than a fitting gift for so lovely a young lady. Oh, Senor Donavel, dear Donavel. I cannot say how much I like it. Gracias, gracias, Senor. Here, here, Senorita. What are you doing? Oh, there. That is how happy I am. Oh, <laughs> mi amigo. Now you have made the conquest. Look at her, her running away. But Don Juan, she... she... See? Si, she kissed you. You have truly won her heart now. <laughs> she actually kissed me. Senor, it's been years since this ugly bachelor face has known the touch of a woman's lips. Oh, senor, I am sorry. The silly child was impetuous. I hope you are not offended. Offended? Senor, I'm delighted. I'm... Well, I hardly know how to express it, but... She's wonderful, senor. Wonderful. <laughs> Don Juan, here we go. I want to thank you for your hospitality. Oh, Don Abel, it is a delight to have you come here more often than you used to. You are enjoying the fiesta? Si, si, it's wonderful. 
Everybody always enjoys your fiesta. See, si. except my little Arcadia here. She has been looking sad all evening. Oh, senorita, you must not mar the loveliness with such a doleful look. Why are you sad? Perhaps because you have not danced with me for so long, senor. <laughs> but Donna Bell has already danced with you three times, Arcadia. Are you sure it is not because he has also danced with the other senoritas? Of course not. <laughs> ah, she's jealous of you, mi amiga. <laughs> oh, such a silly girl, senorita. Will you dance with me now? I do not think so. I am tired. <laughs> now she is going to punish you, senor. Senorita, Arcadia, don't you think I've been punished enough having to dance with all those other old crows when I might have been with the loveliest senorita in all Alta California? <laughs> Senor, I shall not listen to your flattery. Eh, perhaps not, but you cannot stop blushing, little dog. Papa. Will you dance with me, senorita? Well... Come, have pity on your most humble admirer. All right, but do not think it is because of your flattery. I can see through that, senor. Very well, then, just to please an old bachelor. Gracias. If it will please you. And now I am deserted again. Oh, well, <laughs> enjoy the dance. You dance well, Dona Bell. Oh, I'm not so bad for an old fellow, I guess. Oh, senor, you must not say that. You are not old. I wish it were not so, senorita. Then it is not. I say it is not. To me, you are young. Oh, <laughs> senorita Arcadia. No, you're wrong. But I am not. Dona Bell, I am tired of dancing. Shall we sit down? See, si. perhaps in the garden. Won't you be cold? No, no. Come. Very well. My arm, senorita. Gracias. Ah, it is lovely here. The cool breeze, the moon, the music of the night. See, si. but not as lovely as you, senorita. Please do not flatter me now, senor. I assure you, I've never flattered you. To me, you're the loveliest thing that ever lived. Don't Wait. Abel. Don't move. With the moon in your face, you're, you're an angel. Mi amigo, you must not say those things. Not tonight. Already I have dreamed too much. Dreamed? See, si. For a young girl's heart, senor, there is no accounting. It is easily overthrown. See. Si. So is an old man. Please do not say that ever again. You are not old. I'm over 40. And what does that mean? Nothing. I am very young. But somewhere, somehow, our hearts reach out into space to meet. Age makes no difference. My dear, you can't mean that. I do, Dona Bell. See, I do. Senorita Arcadia. You're wearing the shawl. My shawl, as your mantilla. See, si. it is my treasure. Perhaps you'd accept another gift from me. A different kind of gift. What, Dona Bell? This. I've carried it with me for days now, hoping to find courage to ask you. Dona Bell, mi corazón. It is a necklace of pearls. But that means marriage. See. Si. I got it in Mexico, just for such a time. It's for you, if you'll accept it. You want me to be your wife? If you will have me. Accept you? Oh, mi querido. This is what I have dreamed. And now it comes true. Mi amado, I shall be most happy to be your wife. Don Juan Bandini has given me permission for the marriage of his daughter, Arcadia. So it remains for you to help us. You see, although I am a naturalized citizen of Mexico, I was born an American. See? You wish the church to give you a special dispensation for the performance of the marriage? See, si, that is it. Well, Senor Stearns, since you are an outstanding citizen of our community and an upright, righteous man, I see no reason why such permission should not be granted you. Oh, gracias, gracias, Your Worship. I shall arrange it immediately. So that the bans may be published. Uh, uh, Your Worship, I have one more request to make. 
See? As you no doubt know, there's some disparity between the ages of Senorita Arcadia and myself. And I should like to avoid any ridicule which might be directed toward us by some thoughtless young people of the Pueblo. See? I understand, senor. So uh, perhaps we could dispense with the bands and be married right away. If it could be arranged, I should be most happy to contribute to any charity which you might indicate. Oh, senor, that will not be necessary. Unless you wish. But I feel sure that under these unusual circumstances, the marriage can be arranged as you request. And may I offer my blessings and your union, and my hope that you shall live a long and happy life together. And so 100 years ago, in May 1841... Don Abel Stearns and Maria Arcadia Bandini were married in the little church of Our Lady of the Angels, still standing in the Los Angeles Plaza. Now Don Abel must have a fitting home for his beautiful bride. And so, on the corner of what became Main and Arcadia Streets in Los Angeles, he built the showplace of the town, El Palacio. It quickly became the center of the social life of the growing city. It was there that the most lavish parties and fiestas were held. And it was there that Don Abel brought home news a few months after the marriage. Arcadia? Arcadia? See, si. Abel, what is it? Oh, my dear, I have news. Great news. Well, what did you tell me quickly? You're so excited. See, si, I have a right to be. I've bought my first rancho. No. See, si. I've just settled matters with Francisco Figueroa, brother of the late governor, to buy his rancho Los Alamitos. Oh, mi querido, that is wonderful. I am so happy for you. See, si, my dear, now I am a real California ranchero. But this is only the start. I shall buy more ranchos and more cattle. I shall build my holdings up until I'm the biggest ranchero in all Alta California. See. Si. <laughs> oh, mi querido, you are so funny. Funny? What's funny about it? Uh, don't you think I can do it? See, si, of course you can do it. <laughs> and you will be a ranchero, but... But what? But you will always be the ranchero americano. For you must be the biggest, the most successful in all Alta oh, California. <laughs> well... <laughs> I do not want you to change. And I am sure that you will be the greatest ranchero in all Alto California. Frequently, we have referred to Title Insurance and Trust Company's huge system of records called its title plant. The importance of these records leads naturally to speculation as to the consequences of their possible destruction by fire, earthquake, or other cause. In the great Chicago fire in 1871, all records except those of one title company were destroyed. In the great fire in San Francisco in 1906, practically all of San Francisco County's records were totally destroyed, and the result was chaotic. Only by means of a special act of legislature, the McErney Act, and frequently at a cost of lengthy and expensive court action, were landowners enabled to reestablish their titles to property in the absence of the county's records. To protect this community against such a contingency, Title Insurance and Trust Company maintains a duplicate set of records, including priceless maps and essential data contained in all the vitally important county records in a special archives building away from the downtown area on Eastern Avenue. Constructed of steel and concrete, its foundations sunk to bedrock, this building is as completely fireproof, quake-proof, and generally disaster-proof as is possible to construct. It is set on the crown of a small hill safe from floodwaters and centered in an 11-acre piece of ground protecting it from the encroachment of neighboring buildings. A caretaker is on duty day and night. The existence of this archives building and its priceless contents is important to you, for no matter what disaster may strike and destroy the Title Insurance and Trust Company's downtown title plant or the county's own public records, this community will not face a situation such as confronted San Francisco 35 years ago. All records necessary for the verification of land ownership will have been preserved. Don Abel Stearns vowed that he would become the greatest ranchero of all Alta California, and he kept his word. One after another, he acquired ranchos until he owned a vast acreage spread out over all of Southern California. At the Rancho Los Alamitos, he acquired a new neighbor, Another American, Don Juan Temple, who married the daughter of Doña Manuela Nieto de Cota and bought the ranchos Los Cerritos from her and her brothers and sisters. So now all the land that was to become Long Beach was owned by the two Americans. 
Don Abel and Don Juan were friendly rivals in business, but close friends socially. Sometimes the work was shared, and sometimes a visitor was amazed to be taken on an interesting excursion called a run through the mustard. See, my friend, here they come. Those are Don Juan Temple's men coming up. I see him. Here all you're about care of, huh? Well, now, what is it you and I are going to do? Uh, we're going for a run through the mustard. It sounds crazy to me. What do we do? Well, you see the mustard. Now, where's any mustard? Well, there in the field, right in front of you. You mean those uh, tall weeds or trees or whatever they are? They're mustard plants. I never even knew mustard grew in plants. Thought it was something that came out of a can. <laughs> this is wild mustard growing here in these plains. As far as you can see, it's taller than a man on horseback. See, and that's the trouble. One can get lost in it very easily. Ah, I can imagine. Well, then, uh, why are we going for a run through it? Because many head of cattle stray into it and get lost. We can't see them. They're hidden. So we gather all the men and ride through, keeping a certain distance apart, and drive all the cattle out the other side. <laughs> well, well, well. Hi there, Don Juan. Are we ready? He's ready. You take that end, Don Abel. See? All right, men, you know what to do. Into it. Come on, my friend. Now you shall see what a run through the mustard is like. Adelante! <laughs> Every year, the two rancheros looked forward to a great event. Both were great horse lovers, as were most of the early Californians. And each year, the owner of Los Alamitos pitted his best racer against the favorite of Rancho Los Cerritos. On the appointed day, the entire populations of both ranchos assembled on the course, which ran straight from Signal Hill to the beach. The wagering was fast and furious, and each owner was vehement in behalf of his horse. Dona Bell, that Palomino of yours could not beat a very slow cow. She doesn't have to race a cow, but she can very easily beat that pinto of yours. I'll bet another hundred that she doesn't. Make it five hundred and I'll take it. Very well, it's a bet. Mark it up, senor. Are you ready, Dona Bell? Shall I give you a signal? See, si. wave the flag. We shall show this gentleman what the horses of Los Alamitos look like. And here it goes. Yeah! Here they come. Come on, Diablo. Come on, Estrella. Yeah! Oh, you can't see straight. It's Estrella. The Diablo's still eating. They're coming from. No, no. It's Estrella. It's Diablo. It's Diablo. Diablo. Estrella. It must be Estrella. A winner, Estrella. Don't have ever stands, Estrella. Well done, one. Whatever you say now, my horse even came from behind to beat yours. I was wrong. Your horse could beat a cow and did. <laughs> <laughs> wait until next year, senor. Just wait until next year. No, next year won't be any different, Don Juan. I can't lose. That's all. I can't <laughs> lose. But Don Abel could lose and did. Satisfied that he was the greatest ranchero of the land, he started a new venture. He built a building in Los Angeles and called it the Arcadia Building. But now... California belonged to the United States. There were taxes and costs had gone up. He had to borrow money, mortgage his land. And slowly, things began to go against him. We'll need more money to finish the building. You're in too deep now to pull out. You'll just have to borrow more. You'll have to go before the court and prove your claim to the land. Means lawyers and fees. It's cattle thieves, Dona Bell. They've raided Los Alamitos again. It's 500 head this time. Business is bad, Dona Bell. I can't get the price for your hides. You used to. We need more money, Dona Bell. More lawyers, senor. 500 heads more stolen. Dona Bell, it's drought. It has not rained for months. There's no water. The cattle are dying like flies. Two years. Drought. Parched earth. Dried up pastures. Emaciated cattle moaning in agony, staggering, dropping, helpless. Nothing can be done. There is no water. In two years of drought... We have finished our count today, Donabel. We've lost 20,000 head of cattle. You're ruined. So, in the case of Michael Reese versus Abel Stearns, I issue a decree of sale against the defendant's rancher Los Alamitos to meet the debt. Los Alamitos passed from the hands of the energetic American... And a short time later, Don Juan Temple on Los Cerritos was to give up his vast land, too. Between 1866 and 1881, the two great ranchos gradually came into the possession of one family, a family still closely associated with the land which became Long Beach, the Bixby family. 
And then, one day in 1882, a man stood on the spot near what is now the corner of American and Anaheim Streets. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the spot where I've dreamed of starting my American colony. And now the dream is to become a reality. Mr. Bixby has given me an option on this land. The maps are drawn up, streets are laid out, and we're ready to sell lots in the new town of Wilmore, California. William Irwin Wilmore's ambitious plans for a city collapsed. But the start he gave it was taken up by a new group of men who organized the Long Beach Land and Water Company and renamed the settlement Long Beach. In 1887, the town was officially established just in time to be caught up in the wild boom of the 80s, which brought thousands of settlers streaming to California. The Terminal Railroad and then the Pacific Electric offered new, easy access to Long Beach, and the seaside resort grew by leaps and bounds. 1900. 2,252. 1910. 17,800. 1920. 55,600. 1930. 142,000. 1940. 163,000 people. Partially responsible for such phenomenal growth had been the great discovery which took place one day in 1921 when... Here she comes! Look out, boys! It's a gusher! A gusher! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. On that same signal hill where once Don Abel Stearns and Don Juan Temple raced their thoroughbred horses, the liquid gold of petroleum was brought up from the depths and the land of the ranchos Los Cerritos and Los Alamitos became the great metropolis of industry, commerce, pleasure, and good living that is the Long Beach of today. Such is progress, and such is the romance of the ranchos. Before Frank Graham returns to tell you about next week's story, here's another interesting word about the archives building we spoke about a few minutes ago. The building we described is the one that is now being used. After the San Francisco fire, the management of Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles saw the necessity for protection against a similar loss of public records. So it was then that the Title Insurance and Trust Company's first archives building was built in 1911 on a three-and-a-half-acre tract at Melrose and Van Ness Avenues in Hollywood. At that time, the company had great difficulty in obtaining a caretaker for two reasons that are interesting today. The first was that the location was so far away from the city, a caretaker living on the property, it was said, would have no opportunity for any social life whatever. The second objection was that the howling of coyotes at night made it impossible to sleep. Remember now, that was at Melrose and Van Ness Avenues in Hollywood only 30 years ago. It illustrates the speed of this community's growth a growth that quickly cured those particular objections to the location. However, the building finally became too small, was abandoned to the March of Progress in 1939, when the present archives building on Eastern Avenue was completed. And what's the story for next week, Frank? The story next week is not about a rancho, but a man. In the early 1870s, the entire Southland trembled at the name of Vasquez. The terror spread by this famous bandit furnishes an exciting chapter in the romance of the ranchos. Don't miss it. And so until next week, this is your wandering vaquero Frank Graham saying, hasta la vista, señoras y señores. The Romance of the Ranchos, a presentation of the title insurance and trust company of Los Angeles, featuring Frank Graham as the wandering vaquero, comes to you each week at the same time. Bob Lamont speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.